Okay, today we want to look at how to draw ray diagrams for diverging mirrors. A few questions just to remind you of what we've been doing. Uh, diverging mirrors, are they convex? Remember, convex are the ones that stick out. So the light would come in this way and you'd hit the part that was curved out. Concave mirrors curve in. So diverging mirrors are convex. And convex mirrors bend outwards. Diverging mirrors allow you to see panoramas covering large regions. So they're used in shops for security purposes so that clerks can see over the entire storeroom. The ray rules that we're going to use for diverging mirrors are almost identical. The only difference is now the focal point and the center of curvature will be on the opposite side of the mirror. So we'll have our object somewhere over here, light rays coming in, and then our rules will have to do with the focal point and the center of curvature. Our first rule, if we send in a ray that's aiming directly through C. So let's, uh, let's draw an orange line directly through C. From, remember the rays always come from the tip of the arrow. It's like the head of the candle where the light is coming from. So if we were to direct a ray along this way, it would head straight back. And that would be our first rule. So if we come in in this direction, it would bounce off and it bounces right here and it would go back in the same line. And I'm going to just put some marks here to show, to make this a dotted line to say over here, there's no real light over here. The light doesn't pass through the mirror at all. It just reflects off. So that's rule number one. If the ray goes from the tip of the arrow and aims directly towards the center of curvature, it'll bounce straight back along the same path. Rule two. If we direct our ray parallel to the principal axis, so let's go parallel to the principal axis, like so. Then the rule is it will reflect as if it were coming from F. So now if I, my reflection should be like it were coming from F. And once again, I'm going to make it a dotted line back here. because there's no real light back here. The light comes in in this direction parallel to the principal axis and reflects as if it had come from F in that direction. Third rule. If the ray is directed at F so let's do a ray that's directed at F. So we're going to aim our ray straight at F. If we do that, it's supposed to reflect off parallel to the principal axis. So the reflection occurs right at the surface of the mirror and it would reflect off this way. Once again, I'm going to make this a dotted line back here because no real light in behind the mirror. And so the light comes in, it's heading straight at F, and then it bounces off parallel to the principal axis. That's the third rule. So now what we'd like to do is a ray diagram so that we can locate the image. We can use any of our two rules to do that. So let's try. 
Okay, I think a simple one to do would be one that comes in parallel to the principal axis should reflect away from F. I'll make this a dotted line, no real light back behind the mirror, and I'll put my arrows on here. This is an incident, and this is the outgoing reflected ray. Okay, now I could either use my rule through C or my other rule through F. I only need two rays, I don't have to do all three. I'm going to choose to direct my ray at F rather than C. So let's come in, and I want to go straight towards F. And if I do that, it should bounce off parallel to the principal axis. So let me once again, I'm going to put some dots here to make that. A dotted line, so there's no real light back there. And what the light is really doing is incident, comes in this way, reflects off the mirror, and goes off like that. Now, I want to focus in on this ray and this ray here, because those are the two reflected rays. And they're going to be what forms the image. So what I've done here is I've simply drawn the two reflected rays. There's my object, there's my two reflected rays. Now to locate the image, what we need to do is really our eye would be back here and our brain would see these reflected, rain, the reflected rays and they're separating from each other. As you get farther away from the mirror they're getting farther away from each other. The brain assumes that these, light, these rays came in a straight line and it kind of works backwards and find it, finds out where those rays originated from. So let's, with a dotted line, well, I'll use a green line, and then I'll make it dotted. So what I'm going to do here is bring back, extend back these two rays and see where they meet. Now, those are not real rays. They're just, there's no real light there. So I'll make that a dotted line. And I really don't need this extra bit here, so I'll take that out. Here's where the brain assumes these rays came from. So that the head of the arrow, which we could think of as the candle, the flame, will be located right here. And the tail, we go back to the principal axis. So our, let's draw that on. There's my that would be my image. Of course, the next step is to characterize that image. First thing, we want to compare its size to the size of the object. Here's the object. Here's its image. Well, clearly the, the image is smaller in size. So we're saying the image is smaller. Its attitude, it's upright. Its location between F and the mirror. And note that it's behind the mirror. And the last one is type. Notice there's no real light back here, so that's not a real image. That is a virtual image. And that's a fully characterized image. And if you can do that, you're going to do very well in this unit. Okay, thank you.